Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Shutterstock. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to go through a Node.js running, Linux running robot with you in five minutes, and I have about three minutes afterwards, so I'm going to blaze through some slides. So let's go. Three minutes afterwards for Q&A. So if I miss anything, just shoot your hand up, and I'll try to answer anything that I can in the allotted time. Uh, as Matt said, my name is Ray Hightower. I run a software company in Chicago called Wisdom Group. We run a couple of conferences. One is Windy City Rails, the other is Ruby Kareem in the Caribbean. Uh, enough about me. What is a robot? A lot of times when someone thinks about a robot or they talk about a robot, we might envision something with arms and legs and a head or whatever. But we're a very technical audience and we know that a robot, typically you will design it for the job that you want it to do. It doesn't have to look like a human. For example, in the oil industry, they use these devices, these are remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, to perform maintenance on the, uh, the off-sea off drilling rigs that they use. Uh, this happens to be a very huge robot. If you look in the lower left corner of the photo, you'll see a person there doing maintenance, just so you can have an idea of what, what kind of an ROV that is and how large it is. Um, here's another ROV, about the same size, about the same cost range, and ROVs for years, for decades, have cost millions of dollars, and they required a great deal of expertise, and they were very big, and they were very heavy. So some guys got together and founded a company called Open ROV, two guys in Berkeley, California. The name of the company is Open ROV, and their mission is to democratize undersea exploration, to make it available to everybody. Just as mainframe computers were once millions of dollars, and eventually we had PCs and now, now tablets and smartphones that are only a, hundred, a couple hundred dollars, this brings the ROV down to the masses. So you get really excited about your underwater robot. Instead of it costing millions of dollars, you have something that costs under $1,000, and open ROV is like 850 bucks and you get really excited about it, and you send away for it, or you, you pay for it on the internet, and this is what you get. A whole bunch of parts. <laughs> it's a kit. Just like in the early days of PCs, uh, some of you may remember the first Mac, uh, you had to put it together. And that's what you have to do with the Open ROV. And uh, here's mine in the process of me putting it together. It took me a couple of weeks. Had to had to solder. I had to learn acrylic welding. Had to learn some other techniques that I was not familiar with before. You know, I'm a software developer. I learned to solder in an electronic shop in high school, but that was a long time ago. And if, if you take a look, I have my open ROV here. The soldering connections are not that great. They're good enough to make it work. But that's the work you have to do. Here's the finished unit. You know, again on my workshop with all my other junk. And in the back, you can see the screen. Now what's exciting about the ROV is that on board there's a BeagleBone Black running Linux and running Node.js. And when you are controlling it, you control it through a web browser. What you see in front of you is a, a, a Google Chrome web browser running on Ubuntu. That's my thumbs up in front of the camera that's on the open ROV unit. And notice the heads up display. Isn't that cool? It's like flying a fighter, pl uh, fighter plane under, under, uh, underwater. Uh, here's another shot. This was from my first expedition in Lake Michigan, so I was just giving it the thumbs up to make sure that the camera was working. To the left and right, you see the batteries, and if any of you want to see the actual unit, I have it here so you can take a closer look at it. And if you want to SSH into the BeagleBone Black that's on the unit, uh, you can do that too. I'll even give you the password. <laughs> uh, so here's, this is underwater. Here's, uh, these are rocks at the bottom of Lake Michigan, and uh, there are more rocks at the bottom of Lake Michigan. Now, I really did see a fish when I was down there, but I, did, I didn't get a, a photograph of that, but, you know, it's cool. And uh, our plan is to do some other expeditions in some places where the water is clear. You know, we're going to do one in the Caribbean in, Janu uh, in January, a couple in the Caribbean in January. So let's talk about what's inside this thing. There's a BeagleBone Black about the size of a Raspberry Pi. It runs Linux. In this case, we're running the Ubuntu distribution of Linux. <clears throat> That's the one that the OpenRV team put on there. Now, why am I at a Node.js meeting talking about this? Because it runs Node, and it runs Socket.io, and it runs TCPIP. And what's so cool is that one of the examples that the owners of the company use when they talk about this, they say that you could have a, an open ROV unit in Barbados, 
and control it from a laptop in Taiwan because it talks TCP IP over the internet. How cool is that? And there are things we're going to be able to do with this technology that we haven't even thought of yet. You know, so far we're playing with this. This is, this is a very new unit to me. I started experimenting with this just a few months ago. So it's very new. Here's the technology stack. You can't see all of that. It's um, writing too small. So I simplified it. And I'll just go through this with you real quick. We have three event loops. We have an event loop going uh, in the browser, Chrome. The OpenROV happens to work better with Chrome than any other browser. I think it's because it's, uh, it's got the V8 JavaScript engine. There's an event loop on the BeagleBone Black where Node.js is running and an event loop on the Arduino. That's right, there's a BeagleBone Black and an Arduino inside of the unit. And I, can, I can show you those if you want to come up and take a look at it. Socket.io manages communications between the browser and the BeagleBone Black on the unit. And uh, there's a serial interface between the Arduino and the BeagleBone Black. And here are a few more pictures. Underwater, being controlled, and with a scuba diver, and with a scuba diver again. Finally, what's ultra cool about OpenROV is that it is completely open source. So if you go to github.com slash OpenROV, you're Node.js developers. My goodness, you can contribute to this if you want. You can do whatever you want with the software. You know, that's what pull requests are for, right? So, you know, get pull and, you know, knock yourselves out. In this case, I was visiting the factory in Berkeley, and on the left is an electrical engineer, 30 years of electrical engineering experience. On the right is a pilot who pilots human-sized underwater vehicles, and they're collaborating on the next user interface for OpenROV. And these two are customers. They're not part of the company. So customers are hanging out there. It's all open source. It's very cool. So check it out at openrov.com. Or if you want to know more about me, I'm at rayhightower.com. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. So I'm guessing your, your tether, that's how, the, that's how you're communicating. Yes, the question was, uh, that it, is there a tether, and is the tether the way that we communicate with the device remotely? Yes, uh, we have to use a tether because we haven't figured out how to send Wi-Fi underwater yet. Uh, there are some people who are working on a way to convert TCP IP to sound waves and let those go to a device that receives the sound waves and converts that back into TCP IP. But who knows how far that, that would be cool, isn't it? It sounds really cool. Yeah, but I, I haven't seen that working successfully yet, but I've heard that there are some people working on that. Yes, ma'am. How easy is it to get started? How easy is it to get started? You know, that's, that's really relative. I'm not very good with solder. I can do it okay, and I was able to, to knock it out. It took me about two weeks of nights and weekends to knock this out. Uh, the founder of the company can build one of these in a day, but, you know, he better, right? <laughs> Uh, so it really depends on what your skill level is with soldering, with working with acrylic, with working with electronics. I had some experience in those other areas, but acrylic, this was a brand new acrylic experience for me. So, yeah, different, uh, different paces uh, for different people. Yeah. That's it? Yes, sir. Uh, in terms of battery technology, does this kit come with like a charger? Oh yeah, question about batteries. Does it come with a charger? Uh, what you do, the, the kit does not come with a charger, but I bought, and I'll show you the charger up here if you want to take a look at them. Uh, the batteries, I bought those through Amazon. Where else do you buy anything, right? The batteries are lithium ion batteries. There are six of them. They are about the diameter of uh, a C battery, a little bit longer than a D, but about the diameter of a C, and you'll see them inside the unit. And uh, you do charge them. They're lithium ion batteries and there's special charges for those. But they're readily available from Amazon.com. Well, yes? Why do you need the Arduino when uh, you've got the Beagle board? Oh, that's a good question. Why do you need the Arduino when you've got the Beagle board? That's something that I'm still learning about, but here's what I know so far. The Arduino is doing things like monitoring the depth sensor and the direction sensor, and it's controlling the motors. It's, the Arduino is more of a microcontroller, and what the BeagleBone is doing is communicating with the surface. The BeagleBone, most of its CPU cycles are, are running that Node.js app, so you can see the images that are getting sent up by the camera, and so that you can see the data that's on the heads-up display. 
So really, it's like delegation of responsibility. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, he's asking if I'm a gadget freak. <laughs> How did I get involved with in ROVs? Uh, and it was just, it, it just looked cool. <laughs> it just looked cool. I, I want to give you something now. It looked cool, and there was also a legitimate reason, right? Like there are two reasons that all of us do something, do anything, right? There's a, a real reason, and there's a reason that we tell everybody. Um, you know, my my. <laughs> My company, my team and I, we do Ruby development, we do Rails development, Objective-C, and uh, I like the idea of learning other technologies, other languages. I always wanted to learn something about Node, and this was a very good way to make sure that I learned Node. That's the reason I tell everybody. <laughs> What's but the reason? Oh, it, it's cool. <laughs> it's a cool device, yeah. Yes? What's the latency like between getting images back from the camera and sending commands for motors and such? Oh yeah, what, what is the latency like between uh, getting the images back from the camera and sending commands to the motor? It's, it is uh, quick. It's not so quick that you would um, think it's instantaneous, but uh, if, for example, you put it up on your desk, you wave your hand in front of it, you can see a delay between the waving of your hand and the image you see on your uh, laptop. So I would say it's less than a second, but it's not so quick that humans can't perceive it. I've never measured it though, but you, you can see it. Yes? Are you on the maximum depth it can descend to? Yes, what's the maximum depth that it can uh, uh, descend to? The maximum depth depends on how well you assemble the unit. <laughs> uh, it is designed, um, it's waterproof, and actually, you know, I was so surprised and happy and ecstatic when I put it in Lake Michigan and it didn't flood, right? Um, it's designed to go down as low as 200 meters, depending on how well you assembled it. And because it's open source, I have seen in the Open ROV forum, you can go to openrov.com, there's a forum there where people discuss their experiences. There are some people who are working on variations of the design whereby they can go deeper than that. But if you go to 200 meters and a little bit further than that, it's going to implode. And they have done actual destructive testing to see, <laughs> to see what happens when it implodes. What happens is that the electronics chassis, the cylinder, I can show this to you. We'll go back to one of the photos. The cylinder that you see, that holds all of the electronics. It can take only so much pressure. And at about 200 meters, it's just had enough, and it implodes. And that's all. <laughs> yeah. Am I doing all right on time map? OK. Yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't even. Oh, no, that's all right. Go ahead. Oh, you want to see the architecture? You know what I would suggest for the architecture? That chart, uh, two ways that you can get that. One, I will post my slides at rayhightower.com. They'll be there uh, by tomorrow evening. And the other thing is, if you go to github.com slash openrv, that architecture chart is there. And the cool thing is, because this is open source, if you look at the repo, you will see updates that are as recent as a few hours ago. So you may actually get something that's more up to date than what I have in my slides. Yes? Uh, the question is, do you need scuba divers to watch the unit while it's down there? It depends on how you want to do it. Uh, and the reason I say it depends is because there are some people whom I've heard want to use this unit in places where they don't want to risk human life. Uh, for example, um, I, I don't know, uh, under the ice in the Arctic somewhere. You don't want to risk human life down there. Listen, somebody you don't like. Go down there, look at my phone. That's not funny. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so it, it depends on how you want to do it. But ideally, you want to be able to send it down and pilot it while it's down there remotely. That's the ideal way. Oh, and the other thing, uh, more along the lines of remote, but some of the, uh, some other open ROVers have done is, they have, like in Tahoe, there was an expedition in Lake Tahoe where they had the open ROV and the patrol unit on a boat. And then they had a huge Wi-Fi antenna between the boat and a cabin on shore. And the actual pilot was in the cabin on shore. It's TCPIP. It's TCPIP. And we know how to do that. We know how to do that all day. Yeah. 
Everybody in this room knows how to do that. Is, yes? Is this thing modular? Because I can see at a certain depth, you start from this color, you start to move like light and all this other stuff. So like, what's the clarity? I mean, it seems like we're not in the Caribbean, so it would be kind of limited. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, the, the question is, the unit modular and what's the clarity at whatever depth you go down? I'm glad you asked that. One of the expeditions we did in Lake Michigan, we went in there, it was a very, I don't even have pictures of that one. Uh, it was a, a stormy day. I mean, not rain, but the waves were kicking up all the silt, and we saw nothing down below. Now, the unit itself has two sets of bright white LEDs on the front. So if it's just a matter of darkness, you can see things. And it also has on the front two lasers that are 10 centimeters apart and parallel to each other. And they're not designed for warfare, <laughs> but the lasers are designed to measure things. They're 10, 10 centimeters apart, which is about that far apart, and they're parallel to each other. So if you see an object and you want to know how big it is, you shine the two parallel lasers on that object, and then you can get a rough idea of how large the, the object is. Yes? Could you install an infrared camera? Yeah, uh, the question is, could you install an infrared camera? Yes, you could if you wanted to. It's all open source. So especially if, um, you know, I'm just brainstorming this. If you know of an infrared camera that has a USB interface, the BeagleBone Black inside of the device has a USB interface. So if you happen to have an infrared camera on you, we can try that today. That would be cool. Okay, thank you very much for your time.